Hello, everyone, and welcome to the first episode of The Power of Better for the year 2023. I'm Elbert Walters III, Executive Director of Powering Chicago. Powering Chicago is the unique partnership between IBEW Local 134 Union Electricians and the signatory electrical contractors of Chicago and Cook County. Coming up in this episode, I sit down with Chicago Building Commissioner Matthew Boday to discuss the latest code initiatives expected to go into effect. But first, we travel to Austin, Texas to visit the 3M Innovation Center to learn more about their cutting edge, medium voltage cabling technology already in use in Europe for nearly a decade. This technology will allow projects in the US to maximize efficiency and safety. Years ago, when Europe was trying to wean itself off of its nuclear power reliance, US science and technology giant 3M developed state-of-the-art cabling technology for medium voltage networks, which now incorporated two-way or bi-directional power flow. Ryland Merrick is 3M's Director of Grid Modernization. The primary application for this was for on the backside of secondary substations, where there was the introduction of renewable power coming onto the grid. The biggest challenge they were having was with reverse power flow coming into the grid and causing noise with the equipment. So what this equipment allowed them to do is be able to see with high accuracy what is happening on those cable segments. Recently, 3M, a premier partner with NECA, allowed us a rare look inside its innovation and training centers in Austin, Texas, where this electrical industry altering technology was created a decade ago. Terry Collier is vice president of research and development for 3M's electrical markets. And so this is the ability for us to be able to give and help you have that visibility in a way it's a heart rate monitor for your medium voltage electrical system. A monitor for bi-directional power flow of AC to DC and DC to AC on medium voltage systems that can be used in version of a company's remote terminal units or intelligent electronic devices. So it's critical for us to be able to develop a system where we were able to get data that was consistent across many different types of plug-in RTUs, IEDs, many different types of cable types. It needed to work consistently across of all those applications. This plug and play adaptability to existing equipment is something that appeals to contractors like Matt Malberg of Aldrich Electric in Libertyville. It's an offering he's planning to give to his customers and thinks his fellow signatory contractors will follow suit. At Aldridge and other NECA IBW contractors, it would be a huge benefit for us to be able to monitor this. It gives us the opportunity to continue to schedule and then also the reliability of the campus networks that we work in, whether it be emission critical, healthcare, education, the possibilities are endless. Cost is determined by just how involved and elaborate a customer wants to get and what their overall needs are. So what we're looking at for our sensor cable accessories is, is not much more than what you're paying today for a basic cable accessory you're buying and installing. So for uh, slightly more, you are gonna be able to alarm your system and provide this, this data. You're also gonna need other pieces of equipment that may or may not be on the job site for your remote terminal units or your meters. This technology has proven to be a difference maker for those clients that have been using it in Europe for years now. Certified safety expert Jerry McGlynn, vice president at Schomburg-based McWilliams Electric, believes that this technology has a two-fold benefit. For contractors, it helps improve their mod rate with the insurers, and for customers, it helps them identify a problem before it happens. Having this technology will show the customer that there might be some problems in their system, and they can repair that before a catastrophic failure will happen. So why is this technology, already available in Europe, only now making its way to the U.S.? According to Collier, it's the fact that with coal and gas, there was only a need for one-way power flow. And now with the emergence of clean energy sources, bi-directional power has become a top priority and local contractors are ready. We want to go where we can have an impact, help installers, help end users, and we see those trends changing now in the U.S. 
to allow us to be able to do that. And we're excited to have technology that's been proven, that's been installed for tens of thousands of installations. And now we can take that insight, we can take all that learning and apply that to these opportunities. Having the ability to do that as a service to our customers and keep them up and running 100% of the time for this critical type power needs is very beneficial for all of us. That technology is available in the U.S. We want to switch gears now and get some insight into the latest news from the Commissioner of the Chicago Department of Buildings, Matthew Baudet. The first Native American Chicago City Commissioner, Baudet has been on the job for more than two years and is the son of a union electrician and joins us now. Commissioner, thanks for joining us. Oh, thank you. It's an honor to be here. Commissioner, let's start with that family background I just mentioned and how it has helped you shape your relationship with IBEW Local 134 and the Electrical Contractors Association to this day. Oh, thank you for that question. I always said that that's a generational blessing to me, not just to me, but to, to my entire family. Uh, my father never graduated high school. He uh, enlisted to go fight in World War II, came back, did what everybody else does, has a family. So it's uh, him, my mom, and six of us in a two-bedroom apartment over in California in Logan. He was working three pretty basic dead-end jobs, uh, coming home, beat, and then one day he got into the 134 apprenticeship program, and that changed, changed everything. It was a complete game changer. As I say, it's a, I call it a generational blessing. So what are some of the new code requirements that contractors need to be aware of in 2023? It's really, uh, it's a continuation. So as you know, in 2017, we started the code modernization program. So our codes were decades old. Our, our actual main building code was literally 70 years old. You can imagine the technology, the materials, the new processes, the best practices, seven decades worth of that were not in our code. And um, you know, I have to give credit where credit is due our first code that we updated was the electrical code. We started with the electrical code because we knew that we had buy-in. Where it failed in the past was that they tried to do everything at once. So you can't do every code at once. So, uh, and the other was that they didn't, they didn't talk to anybody. So what we did, we broke it down into little pieces so we were able to manage it and we involved all the stakeholders. So when we did the electrical code, we re reconstituted the electrical commission after a long hiatus. 134 was there with our partners, ECA, as well as the other stakeholders, and we got it done. We not only got it done, we got it done quickly. We implemented it seamlessly. There was no issues with it at all. And what that did, that partnership with 134 and ECA and the other stakeholders proved to all the other trades and the, all the other industries that this can be done. How has the shift towards electrification and renewables affected the Building Commission's work? That's gonna be um, a very, very important role. And uh, I've spoken to the industry about this. We just passed the Energy Transformation Code um, in 2022. And what that does is it knows that it, it shows that we have to have a greater emphasis on electrification. So as some examples, all low, ride, low rise um, commercial buildings now, the roofs all have to be built um, so they don't have to have solar power yet, but they also have to be built to have solar power. Uh, new construction, uh, be it a single family home or, or a small business, any new construction now, even if, if they choose to use um, fossil fuel appliances, have to be wired for electrical because we know that that's the future. Recently passed is the new Chicago Energy Transformation Code. Share with our viewers a high level explanation of that code and its intent. So again, that's moving towards electrification. So we know as a society, we need to move away from fossil fuels. We need to be more um, energy efficient and uh, not just efficiency, it's really transformation. So that's why it's not called energy efficiency code anymore. It's energy transformation code because we're changing the mindset and we, we know we can't continue the way we have been uh, where our parents or grandparents may have, have gone. We need to change uh, and this changes it. It doesn't mandate that you move toward elect electric new electrical appliances, but it mandates that if you're going to build something new, you better have that ready to go, um, the infrastructure built in for it to be electrified. What are some of the key takeaways we in the construction industry can expect from the new code? The key takeaways, again, it's going to be a lot easier. So what the new code does, be it the 
energy efficiency code or the accessibility code or the electrical code or the main building code or some of the codes that are coming down the line. It's flexibility and it's options. You need to be, have a code that uh, works in all 77 communities, that is an economic investment, but also allows them to maintain their houses. We want to be able to have a code that works for everybody. What is the most significant thing contractors, developers, and project managers need to understand about how your building department conducts its business? The most important thing is to know that we're partners in all of this. None of us can do this by ourselves. We've proven that um, time and time again with the code modernization programs where we would not have been able to update the codes without the involvement of, of the, the trades and the contractors and all of our stakeholders. So what I want folks to know is that we have a part, this is a partnership. This is an open dialogue. I have an open door. Um, I don't know everything. We don't know everything. I'm open to all, all great ideas. Um, constructive criticism too. Uh, I'm not afraid, afraid of that and I welcome that because that's, that's how we learn. What are the challenges that you are facing as building commissioner? Several challenges, now, again, with, with COVID, um, with the supply chain issue, those are, those are all challenges. One challenge I think we all face on both sides, the building department and the contractors and the skilled trades is really the labor pool. So we need to get young people especially women and people of color, into the trades. Uh, again, it was a generational blessing for, for my family. I can't say that enough, and that's something I do tell the young people when I, I speak to them is, you know, this isn't just a career for yourself for a couple of years. This is a, a career for life, and it's a generational change, game changer for your family. So we can have all the best codes we have. We can have all the development, but if you don't have the folks that have the skills and the dedication to, to build it and maintain it, it's not going to do us any good. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Brett. It's been a pleasure. If you would like to learn more about the latest code requirements from the Chicago Building Department or 3M's medium voltage cabling technology, click on the link in the description below and make sure to like and subscribe. A special thanks to everyone here at Atomic Imaging Studios, Commissioner Baudet, and 3M Innovation Center for making this episode possible. I'm Elbert Walters III, and for everyone here at The Power of Better, thanks for watching, and we'll see you again next time.